So we have a test MongoDB instance and we also went through a few pre-migration step. Now we are ready to perform the actual migration process. In this demo, we are going to migrate a MongoDB database to Azure Cosmos DB. And to do so, we are going to use Azure Data Migration Service or DMS. After the migration is done, I am going to go ahead and update the connection string in our .NET application and make sure our application continues to work with Cosmos DB. Let's get started. So click on create a resource and search for migration. And I have Azure Database Migration Service available. If I click on that, I can go ahead and create this service. As you can see, there are a few common scenarios that are suggested in this page. For example, you can use this service to migrate data between SQL Server and Azure SQL Database, MongoDB to Azure Cosmos DB, MySQL to Azure Databases for MySQL, and so on. So this service is not only limited to Cosmos DB, and you can use it to move several data sources to destinations. Click on Create, and then I can go ahead and create my migration service. There is another way to get to this page. Let's click on All Services and search for Azure Database Migration Services. And as you can see, I've already bookmarked it to my left-hand side menu. So if I click on Azure Database Migration, I'll be redirected to the dashboard page of my migration services. And as you can see, I already have a migration service created. I can simply click on Add and create a new one. So I'm going to name my migration service Mongo Cosmos Demo02, and I'm going to put it in an existing resource group. For the location, I am going to choose East US. In the next step, I need to select or create a virtual network for this service. So Azure Database Migration Service needs a virtual network to be able to perform. Let's click on that. I already have a virtual network to choose from, or I can simply put a name for a virtual network to be created. Let's choose Migration VNet02 and click OK. In the next step, I need to choose the pricing tier. I can choose between standard or premium. And within each of these tiers, I have the option to adjust the number of virtual cores I'm going to assign to this migration service. So if your data size is big, you probably want to go with more virtual cores. I am going to provision two virtual cores and I'm going to stay in the standard tier. Click OK and Create. The creation of this service is going to take several minutes. I am going to pause the video and come back when the service is ready. After about 12 minutes, my data migration service is ready. Let's click on that. And I'm redirected to the dashboard of my newly created DMS service. This service is deployed into Mongo API demo resource group. I can see the virtual network and IP address for this service. The service tier is standard with two virtual cores and the status is online. I have the option to stop this service or delete it. To be able to migrate some data, I need to go ahead and create a new migration project. Let's go ahead and do that. Click on New Migration Project. So I'm going to name my project Migrate Companies from Atlas. For the source server type, I'm choosing MongoDB. And the target server type is Cosmos DB. And as you can see, this is the only option I have. I also have the option to choose between offline or online data migration. As you probably can guess from the names, if you use the offline data migration, your application using the source database will be offline because the database won't be accessible during the time of migration. But if you choose the online data migration, your database will be online most of the time. I have added a link to the course files so you can read more about these two options. For the purpose of this demo, I am going to go with the offline data migration. So let's click on that, save and click on Create and Run Activity. In the first step, I need to configure my data source. Click on Mode, and I'm going to go with the connection string mode because I have the connection string of my MongoDB ready. And I'm going to paste the connection string I grabbed from MongoDB Atlas console. Let's click on Save. At this point, Azure DMS is trying to connect to this data source to validate the connection string, but this call is going to fail. There are two reasons. The first reason is the fact that MongoDB Atlas is not accepting connections from any IP address except my local. So let's go back to the Atlas console and take a look. Let's close this window. 
So under security, let's click on network access. And as you can see, only my local IP is whitelisted. So in a production system, you can go ahead and create a network peering with Azure DMS virtual network. You can also connect Azure to your on-premises MongoDB server using Express Route or private VPN. These options are out of the scope of this course. So we are going to go with a less secure but fast to configure option. Let's click on IP whitelist and I'm going to add an IP address. And here I am going to allow access from anywhere. I can even go ahead and make it a temporary whitelist, for example, for six hours. Let's click on confirm. So let's go back and try again. So here, as you can see, the DMS connection timed out. Let's go ahead and save again. And let's see what happens now. And as you can see, the connection succeeded this time. So I am redirected to the second step where I need to configure the target. My target is Cosmos DB. So let's go ahead and quickly grab the connection string to this Cosmos DB database. I'm opening another Azure portal in another tab. Click on Azure Cosmos DB. Click on Azure Cosmos DB MongoDB API instance that we created and click on connection string. And let's go ahead and grab either the primary or secondary connection string. And let's go back to DMS. And I'm going to paste this connection string here. And let's click on save. There is also one more note I would like to clarify. Let's go back to the Atlas and click on database access and click on my database user. As you remember, in the previous demo, I set the access for this user to read only. But the read only access wouldn't work with DMS because DMS needs to read the status of the MongoDB database and to do so, it needs the Atlas admin privilege. And that's why I changed the privilege to Atlas admin. This is also something you can change back to read only after your migration is done. So let's cancel that. So I am redirected to the third step here now. In the third step of my wizard, I need to decide which databases I'm going to migrate. So as you remember, the collection I'm trying to migrate was named companies and it was inside the sample training database. So I'm going to only select the sample training database. You could go ahead and choose any other database as well. So let's click save. And in this step, I need to configure my collections. Let's expand the list of collections in my database. So here, I'm only interested in the company's collection. So let's uncheck all and only check the companies. So here, there are two important settings we need to configure. I need to configure the throughput for my collection. And also I need to decide on the partition key. And both of these are pre-migration steps. I am going to choose 1000 RUs or request units for my company collection. And for the shared key, I am going to choose the founded year field. And this field is not going to be unique because I'm going to have several companies which are founded in the same year. Click on save. And I'm done. So each migration run is called an activity. And here, I just configured my first activity and let's call it A1 and also I'm going to boost the request unit during initial data copy. So we make sure we have enough request units for the big amount of writes we are going to do and click on run migration. So as you can see, I have a migration which is not started. I can click on that and I can see the current status of my migration. I can also click on refresh. So I can see the updated status of this migration run. And by the way, at any point, you can stop this migration activity or delete it. I have over 3000 of documents copied over. And the migration is done. I have the option to delete this migration activity, retry it or download the logs. Let's download the file and extract it. Right click, extract here. And let's open the log file with the text editor. So here you can see all the steps that the migration took until the last step when the migration succeeded. So let's close that. So now that we have a successful migration, let's go back to Cosmos DB and see if we have the collection created. Click on Azure Cosmos DB, click on our instance and let's click on Data Explorer. And as you can see, I have the new database sample training created for me. And under that, I have my company's collection. If I click on documents, I can see the list of documents imported. So now let's go back to our small .NET application 
and see if we can use Cosmos DB instead of MongoDB without any code change. First, let's click on connection strings and grab the Cosmos DB Mongo API connection string and let's head back to Visual Studio. Okay, I am in Visual Studio now. Let's go ahead and replace the MongoDB connection string with the Cosmos DB one and paste, save and let's run the code again. So let's step in. Looks like the client is created and let's continue. And as you can see, I got the list of companies. So I have migrated my data from MongoDB to Cosmos DB, changed a simple connection string and didn't need to do any code changes. I haven't used any Cosmos DB SDK for this code. As you can see, the only thing I'm using here is the MongoDB driver. Just before concluding the demo, make sure you go ahead and delete any instance of Azure database migration service you don't need. Same goes for the instances of Azure Cosmos DB that you have used for this demo. Thanks very much.